Hello, welcome to the Counter Attack playthrough series. We're continuing with our playthrough of Invasions. It's still turn one. This is part five. We got the Visigoths. That's the next barbarian nation to activate. Quick little uh, clarification though. Remember those guys, our buddies, the Ostrogoths from last episode? They got four bonus points for conquering Sarmatia, four bonus points for conquering Barbarum. They also got three bonus points. I forgot to mention it, but three bonus points for destroying three non Goth military units. That was when they're fighting the Slavs. Even if the military units recover, which I think they all did, you still get the victory points. So they actually got 11 bonus victory points on their turn, which I think is the most anyone's gotten so far. Uh, but anyway, it's time for their brothers or cousins to shine. They're down here on the border of the Eastern Roman Empire, which is kind of a magenta color. From my point of view, it's not very different from the red color of over here the Romans, but Eastern Romans, Western Romans, they have three infantry and a heavy cav. Um, not very good leaders, a generic Rex king. Um, so I'm guessing they're not going to do a lot of mayhem this turn, but uh, let's go take a look at their overall goals. Okay, here we are. We can see from their little historical vignette here, they crossed uh, the northern edge of the Roman Empire and landed in Spain, Hispania. That'll be 10 uh, bonus VP for a kingdom, 20 for an empire, half if they decide to go f settle down somewhere else. Looks like they have the same uh, additional bonus points that the Ostrogoths have. One point for each non-Goth eliminated, three points for being a fetus. Uh, one per province economic value if they become Catholic. So the nitty-gritty though, turn three. Looks like they get five VP for each of these provinces, three for each of these. Those are all sort of northern Italy, so that makes sense because they migrated over here through northern Italy. So they want to be in northern Italy by turn three and controlling a bunch of provinces. Then turn six, they should be in Hispania, if they want to get a lot of points. What's this? 15 VP if they have Hispalensis, if civilized, if not civilized, 10 VP. Wow. Okay, so they want to be a kingdom in Hispalensis and control Hispalensis, uh, which is uh, that's somewhere in Spain, I think. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of tons of points available for Hispania, so they want to conquer all of Hispania. More Hispania, more Hispania. They're all about Hispania. Um, reinforcements. Turn two, they get six reinforcements. That's more than they currently have on the board right now. And they get a named king, and it's an invasion. Turn three, three more units, another named king. I care that they're named because they're probably better than the generic king. And another invasion. So they should be able to take northern Italy, I'm guessing, with these invasions. Um, but, you know, it depends on how the... Uh, how the Romans deal with them. Okay, they're about to activate, so we go ahead and like let everyone know, hey, I'm about to activate, so, you know, do diplomacy and stuff. So first, um, I looked at the diplomacy cards that are out there, just to remind myself, you know, like, they might entice them to do something, but they're not really binding. They, I don't think it'd be worthwhile to offer them anything. Uh, diplomacy cards that go unused, which is probably going to happen on this first turn, they, at the end of the military phase, give one gold per card. So, you know, it's not a complete waste. Uh, there's a few other things, like the Byzantines, they're right next to them. They could offer them Fetus. As the red player, I know, yeah, they, they want to go over to my buddy Rome, which is also the red player, and take provinces from them to get victory points, right? So I think the Byzantines are going to offer them Fetus. Hey! Hey, guys, I'll give you this wonderful provinces here. I just ask you to take care of them. Um, so that's our one offer from the Byzantine player. They say thank you, but we're going to move off. So no, okay, not going to accept. All right. Now, all the other barbarians on the board, they we're in like a barbarian area, right? All the bar other barbarians have to announce whether they're going to break neutrality and be hostile. No one is. Everyone's, yeah, we're, we're chill. 
So, uh, yeah, unit stacks step. Well, I think we're going to stay in barbarian territory so the Romans can't intercept us. One, two, three. And I have one more move because I, I have infantry with me, right? So uh, they move three, but if they stay with the leader, they can go fourth. Um, the question is, do I want to scrap with Rome a little? I think I do. I think we want to scrap with them. So we're going to go four. Unfortunately, it's across a river, so it's not that great. So they're going in there. And I like this spot. Well, yeah, there's, there's one damaged Roman legion here that could try to intercept. Now the question, like a rules question, I need to go answer. So... I don't even know if I mentioned this. Western Rome and Eastern Rome, on turns one and two, they're allied. When you're in an alliance, you activate at the same time. Even if you have different ages, you, you activate, I think, when the oldest one activates. They're essentially one country. There's some nuances to where they're not technically one country, but they're essentially one country. Um, in fact, I, how it's modeled is pretty good. Like, they're two countries, but they're one country, just like at this time period, right? Um, but to these guys get to treat this as a province of their own. Because if they do, then they can try to intercept. And this is two, oh, it's not two, <laughs> one full strength legion. So that'd be better to intercept over there. Let's go find out. Okay, in an alliance, the nations are mutually friendly, but they do not control each other's territory. And you can only intercept into a province you control. So only the Western Romans, the Roman Occidentalis, can intercept there. The only exception would be if there is a combination of Eastern Rome and Western Rome units in a single province, they would share control of that province together. That's not the case here. So these guys cannot intercept. So that's good for the Visigoths because there's only one Roman unit that can intercept and it's not very good. In fact, I'm inclined to have the Romans not even intercept and just just take it. Like I, I want to try to heal this guy later without having to rebuild it to, from from scratch. Yeah, that's too bad. Okay, so um, all moves are done for the unit stack step. Now for the combat portion of it, we don't even have to go off map. So there's a Lemus here. Um, it's automatically destroyed, but there's a 50% chance of it damaging a Visigothic unit. This is the old D2 check, as the game calls it. And that is even, so one unit is damaged, or destroyed in this case. Um, so they'll take an infantry, and uh, that's one point for each uh, player, the red player and the blue player. That does not count as a battle, so there's no recovery of the Visigothic unit. Okay, well, it's time for our first siege. So if you find yourself in an enemy province with an enemy city, whether it's fortified or not, you have three choices. Choice number one is keep moving, get out of there. Well, we can't. We entered a space with the Lemus, and the Lemus stops you cold. Choice number two is you retreat, and you follow the retreat rules as if you lost a battle. You, it's not losing a battle, but you just follow those rules. The final choice is to besiege the city. Well, we're going to roll a d10, and we need a 7 or more. So, what's that? 40% chance, but there's some die roll modifiers. Looking at the chart, the ones that apply are plus 1 because the besieged is in decline. This is from the Western Roman chart. They're in decline. Uh, plus one. Um, that's basically it, but there is a choice in the matter, so I guess now we're down to 50% chance. Um, we could order an assault, and that would give us plus one, but we take two hits. I think that would leave us too weak. So we're just going to take a 50% chance of a uh, Take in the city. Oh, oh, hold on. We're getting plus one for the Romans being in decline, but minus two for the wall level. 
That's actually a minus one. Ugh. It's getting worse. Minus one. Uh, we will get to use a reroll. So let's see if we can uh, get seven or more. Six minus one is five. We'll do a reroll. Seven minus one is six. So we were unable to take it. Okay, well, these guys have to retreat. They have to retreat in the direction they came from for their first space, and then you can retreat up to three spaces. Remember last episode, if you watch that, the Ostrogoths actually had to evacuate their their vassals that they had captured. Uh, even those counted as retreats, but I only I only retreated in one space. I think these guys will probably retreat two spaces. I think they came in from Moravia, so they have to retreat here. Now, the retreat rules. I don't think they care. Like, if I go two more, can I retreat forward, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, let me just double check. I, like, we don't even own any territory, so it's not like there's a preferred direction for us to retreat into. So I'm guessing I can retreat two more spaces over to here. Yep, I see no restrictions. Um, you know, the, the turns are fairly abstract. They represent 25 years of history, so this retreat is, you know, I suppose just the barbarians cruising around out out in the forests. Okay, so now, leader campaigns. He does have a campaign, so the question is, do I want to leave my horde all by itself to go attack somewhere? I don't think that's wise. Like, if someone gets the horde, we will become their vassal. So I think it's probably best to just stick with the horde. You know, this province is so small, I'm just going to stack it, even though the rules say make sure it's clear where the horde is. Yeah, so we'll just skip the leader campaign, just be a little more cautious. So Visigoth's done. Okay, we've done all four barbarians that are age two. So now we'll go down to barbarians with age one. It's the Kitterites and Alans. Tiebreaker is their activation number. Alans have the lowest number. They activate first, and then the Kitterites. Okay, the Alans, they are a nomadic barbarian tribe. Okay, so those are one of the mean guys. Um, but they only have three units, an infantry and two horse archers, and a generic king. I know they're a nomadic tribe because they have a little horse archer symbol in the upper right. They start uh, where I showed you, over by the Caspian Sea, though... <laughs> Um, <laughs> the map doesn't start on the Caspian Sea, that's the Black Sea, but okay. They start on the Caspian Sea, though. The cruise, like, everyone's just cruising along the northern edge of the Roman Empire. These guys are going to Spain, too, man. So they, they and the Visigoths are not going to be friends. They cannot form an empire, but they get ten for a kingdom over in Hispania. Let's see what their victory point situation is. Okay, they have very specific enemies. Byzantines, Franks, Huns, Romans, Visigoths. One point each. They can become Fetus. Uh, it says, as vassals, they may roll the rebellion die twice and keep the better result. I don't even know what that means, but sounds like they're extra uppity when, when someone make, vassalizes them. They don't get points on turn three. Turn six, they want, they want Spain. Turn nine, Spain. End of turn, Spain. Okay, so we're on the Caspian Sea, just for like reference, like there's the Ostrogoths, Byzantine Empire along the Black Sea. So, uh, the Alans, what are we going to do with these guys? Next turn, the Huns are coming, which, you know, the rules ominously say like to watch out for them, right? So they're going to be coming from up here. These guys are weak, they need to get out of here. It's probably like designed for them to be vassalized by the Huns, but... You know, they could, like, go down here. This is not anywhere in the direction of their main victory points. The They're controlled by the yellow player, and these guys here, the Hiberi, are uh, clients of the yellow player. They're, like, neutral friendly. Okay, well, I'll talk about clients later, but they probably don't want to go that way. They could try to get these guys. I don't think it's wise. They could go try to get the this Roman province here, but... Um, because they're nomads, they're mutually hostile with all other barbarians. Which means, as soon as they step across this line into Abascia, the Ostrogoths could 
intercept. The question is, would they? Because they, they would be weakening the position where their horde is. So let's see, if I'm the yellow player, I think I want these guys getting over to Spain, right? And surviving. So I think for our unit stack step, we'll go that way. But first, anyone want to play any cards? No. <laughs> uh, okay, so these guys are cruising here. So mutually hostile with other barbarians. Do these guys want to intercept? Like, you know, this is step territory. Uh, the province, the uh, terrain is step. Nomadic barbarians get a bonus in step. This leader is pretty good. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's wise to uh, leave the Ostrogothic horde on its own. Sorry, it's kind of off the camera a little bit, but I don't think it's wise to leave them. So they'll go one, two, three. And Ostrogoths are still not intercepting. Four. Maybe they can get Fetus from the Byzantines. You can only be offered it like at the start of your activation, though. Okay, and then uh, leader campaigns, psh, not doing it. So that was easy. All right, next barbarian nation, the Kidarites. Throw these guys up here. They are nomadic barbarians. Give you a little idea of where we are in the world. Let me slide back over here. Over here, this guy's being C. So over here's the Ostrogoths, right? So we're way east, way east. Sort of like Afghanistan area. If we look down here a bit, you know, there's Persia, India. So we're, we're way northeast on the fringes of the, of the game. Let's take a look at their card. Nomadic. They like Parthia. This little map inset, the historical map, threw me for a loop. This is not their historical map. I think this is the historical map of the Huns. It's a misprint. I'll point out where Parthia is, but it's basically just south of where they start. Um, so 10 if they form a kingdom in Parthia. Let's see how they score points besides kingdom. They like eliminating Persians. Okay, makes sense. We're in that part of the world. Half a point for each other kind of unit eliminated. I'm assuming that rounds up since there's a general rule for rounding up. 3 BP for becoming a federate. Turn 3. They want to be in India and Parthia. So Parthia, again, is the, the territory, or the area just south of them. Um, again, India and Parthia. India, Parthia, India, Parthia. Okay, so they don't necessarily want to conquer the Persians, though the Persians do have Parthian territory. Oh, you know, before I go away, um, they are in, doing an invasion. And this is the only turn they have a named king. The rest are generic kings, Rex. And, you know, they get an okay number of units. So, okay, here we are. The area of Parthia, that's the one where they want to go settle, so... Remember that map and set was very wrong. These guys, these guys are the Sogdians, world famous Sogdians. They are an independent minor kingdom. So it's like a kingdom, but they're independent, kind of like the Slavic barbarians from last episode. And so if they're attacked and have to retreat, the Roman player will make the decisions. The red player will make the decisions for them. They can become a um, client of a kingdom if their capital is taken. I think I think their capital was uh, this city here, Sogni, or Maraconda, yeah, Maraconda. Um, I don't think they can become a client of a barbarian. I didn't see that written. I haven't even told you what a client is, but just think about it as like a version of vassalization. So these guys, you know, they would only get half a point for killing Sogdians, but they want their place. They want Parthia, right? Um, Sogdian's capital's not in Parthia, it's in Oxia, where we are. What do we want to do? This is not a fortified city. I'm inclined to, like, take out the capital, bam, on our first, just as a stack, on our first, uh, unit stacks step. Since this is an invasion, we get a second one. So maybe we, like, I don't know, cruise down and take this city, Bactra, or, you know, go over this way. And then he has a one military campaign. You know, we may or may not use that. 
Um, okay, yeah, let's do that. So here we go. Since this is an independent minor kingdom, there's no interception allowed. Like these guys can't try to intercept, but these guys can try to run. Oh, do I want the horde coming with me? I don't think there's any other barbarians showing up in this area of the world. I mean, I could be wrong. There's a little box right here, but um, I think I'll leave the horde way back there and it'll control Oxia if I clear this out. The Romans decline, no, sorry, not the Romans, the red player. The red player declines the honor of retreat. They're gonna fight it out in their capital. Okay, here we are on the uh, <laughs> battle board. Um, you know, I'm not always gonna talk about like, hey, I'm gonna offer you an alliance or whatever uh, at the beginning of an activation. Uh, these guys are invading, so you can't really do alliance cards anyway, or diplomacy cards. But uh, I need to start speeding this up. I'll never get through turn one. Uh, I actually have my game group scheduled in a couple weeks to play this game. And so I'm going to have to tear it down soon. And that means I will highly likely will not get past turn 12. Probably not even past turn 2, but we'll, we'll see. So here we go. Sog, Dien's, Kitterites. Okay, both sides have archers. Two horse archers on the Kitterite side. One horse archer on the... Sogdian side. As you can see, uh, horse archers in clear step and desert, and we are in clear, are worth one and a half points. So that's why they have a three here. One and a half rounds up to two. So they got a two there. Pretty sure it's you round up. So uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, let's go for this. Um, I'm going to use the green dice for the Kitterites. What do we have here? We got a 10 plus. Two, that's 12. 7 plus 3 is 10. Um, 12 is 2 hits. 10 is 1 hit. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, these guys will take 1 hit. Or 2 hits. 2 hits. Oh, yuck. 1 hit. Okay, melee round. Plus 1 for these guys attacking a civilized unit in a barbarian province, and they're barbarians. Okay, plus 1. Now, I crossed a river, that should be minus one, but I'm gonna cheat, because if I was thinking, which I don't do very well when I'm filming, there's a, way, a, a province I could walk through to avoid the river crossing penalties. We'll just do that. Pssh. Only one veteran um, diamond, but it doesn't matter when you're a barbarian anyway. Uh, these guys have cavalry, so I would need two more than them. I don't, there's no heavies. There's nothing. The only other choice I could do is forfeit my reroll here to boost this up to three. I don't want to do that. There we go. Okay, this is six plus two. No, six plus one. With two units is one hit. Nine, uh, sorry, nine, a straight nine. With one unit is one hit. One hit and one hit, huh? I'm gonna order these guys to re-roll. Hopefully they'll get less than seven. They did? Okay, so one hit, zero hits. These guys weren't on the, uh, let's call it the kill list for the Kitterites, so they only get half a point for each one, so that's a point for the Kitterites. These guys, don't think they get a point for anything <laughs> even though they killed some guys so um but it was a small battle um not a very small battle but it's a small battle um because there's only two guys on one side so that's only one unit recovered from each side i'm assuming an independent minor kingdom can recover but then where do they go well i guess they have to retreat don't they well the red player decides where they retreat to so they'll go here Got two here two here all right, we have an unfortified city, a barbarian in the city province. A wave of terror sweeps the land, D2 check, the city automatically surrenders without a siege. They do. Now this guy's already done moving, but if he was moving through a city, he's done moving because he had to fight a combat, but if he was just moving through, the city might surrender while he's moving through and it wouldn't count as a combat unless he wanted to pillage it. Or to loot it, I should say. But we're not moving through, and we're looting it. 
What do we got? Uh, event 18 and three gold. Let's check out what event 18 is. Okay, event 18 is basically um, any nation that received an exceptional caravan, which we didn't process on turn one, it's worth even more. So my interpretation of this though is on turn one, it doesn't matter. There are no exceptional caravans. On, regardless of what the turn is too, also, we're in the military phase, Caravans have already been processed. They get processed way before the military phase. So I'm going to consider Event 18 a no-op um, in this case. So, but still, three gold to the Kidderites for looting this city. And we take a random loot marker to mark that this place has been looted or pillaged. Ah, and this isn't the same as when a raider pillages an empty city space. So not only do, did I draw this to get $3 and put a pillage marker down to mark the city has no more money, but I should draw one of these for each level of the city. Well, it's only one, but if it was a level 3 city, I'd draw three loot markers. Additionally, you always get two gold in booty, so it's really, that was five bucks for the Kidderites. Now, if they were civilized, the Sogdians would become their vassal. But they're not civilized. The, the Sogdians have a s special rules. Like it's part of the Indian into the East expansion. They're just special. They can't. The Sogdians won't vassalize to a barbarian. That's my reading of the rules, anyway. Anyway, next unit stacks step because we're still processing processing the invasion. I'm inclined to take this city as well, <laughs> um, just to get more booty. So yeah, let's do that. Oh, we're down to like two units. No, no, three units. Hmm. We could go just mess with Persia too. Get a point for each Persian unit we go. One, two, three, four. But that's not on Parthia. We want Parthia. Okay. So yeah, we'll, we'll go in here. Bam. Uh, they're not gonna retreat. Let's do a battle. Okay, here we are, archery round. One and a half horse archer, one and a half horse archer, that's three. It's called, it's one and a half because we're in clear. One and a half horse archer rounded up to two. Let's get this going. Uh, it's hard to see. It's not so hot for the uh, Kitterites. And for the, uh, they get a plus two. So the um, Sogdians, they actually have uh, 10, which is a hit. That's not worth a point, because the Sogdians are an independent minor kingdom. So, um, now for the first melee round. I'm looking at zero. Uh, die roll modifier for each. Nothing for these guys. These guys, um, they got plus one for barbarians attacking in, or they're in a barbarian province. Oh, wait a minute. We're in Parthia, that's not a barbarian province, so they don't get a plus one. They get just a minus one for all units crossing a river. Now, the, this guy has a reroll. He could forfeit. And in fact, red is minus. Uh, this guy could forfeit his reroll to get us up to plus one. I think the reroll is probably more important. So let's go. Let's go. Okay, we got a six for these guys, um, for the Kitterites. Six for two units is one hit. And then we got a nine for the Sogdians. Nine for two units is one and a half. We are in clear, which rounds up, so that'll be two hits. So the question is, do we take two hits? Or, you know, do we want to re-roll those two hits? I guess, yes, we want those guys to re-roll. Oof. Seven plus zero is one hit. So, hmm, this is a bloody, bloody battle. So we'll flip this guy, one hit. Flip this guy, one hit. We have to decide, do first the defender, do they wish to retreat? I would say no. Attacker, huh. I think we do, we wanna, we wanna retreat. We'll back, retreat back to Sogdiana. Um, so, recovery, um, I wanna recover the horse archer. Um, this is a small battle um, of side, because one side only has two, so that when there's one side only has two, you only recover one. So uh, the Sogdians, Really no losses, so th this this hurt the Kitterites. Kitterites must retreat between one and three 
paces, as the game calls them. I think we'll just retreat back to Sogdiana. We'll hold that spot. Now that does put the horde um, in danger, theoretically, if, if we were to end our turn anyway, but the Sogdians can't move. You know, it would require the Persians to like want to cut up, come up there. Um, so, leader campaigns. That's the end of the invasion. Does this guy want to do anything? I don't think so. I think I, th I think um, he is just gonna relax. That was the last of the barbarian activations. Good time to end the video. Next video, we continue the military phase. It's time for the civilized nations.